Hi and welcome to the how-to series for Huddo boards. Uh, this is video number one and I'm going to start at the very beginning and how to create and build a board. So here you'll see I'm in my dashboard view and all of these blue cards are boards that I have either created myself or a colleague has created and added me as a member. So if you're coming for the first time, you're likely to only see this create button. And if you click that, you will get a pop-up window that helps you choose a template. So my first tip is to start very simple. So classic is a simple to-do list with just three columns for to do, doing and done. And Kanban is just this concept of columns and cards and you can drag and drop tasks to different columns. So this is where I suggest you begin. And I'm going to call this new board. Very inventive. So here are my three columns. Uh, my second tip is to get your tasks onto your board at the start. So not to worry about too many of the features and the colors and the members and the dates. Just try to get everything either in your head if you've been thinking about the project or perhaps you've had a meeting and you've made a list of tasks on a piece of paper, just get all of these down onto your board first. So I'm gonna start happily with creator tasks. But let's say, let's apply this to a product launch. So you'll probably want a new web page, you want a new video, you want to send an email maybe to your customers, uh, the sales team will probably want a sales deck, uh, you might want to run a competition, uh, to do some social media uh, and you probably need to confirm the winners of the competition on email. So here you'll see I have a list of tasks. Um, if you have around 10, 15 tasks in your to-do, you might actually feel quite comfortable just staying within this view. So you can say, well, I'm doing the task of creating tasks. And then once you've done it, you can move it into the third column. But I really know that I'm probably going to get more tasks than what I've listed here. So I think for me, it would be better if I add different column names so I can see a few of my tasks relate to the website. I obviously have the launch of that product and there are probably tasks that are associated post-launch. So now I can start organizing my tasks within columns. So the video and the web page for the website, the email for launch, sales deck post-launch, competition and social media posts to launch and confirming competition winners to post launch. So now I have a sort of organized view of my tasks. Looking at this, I'm thinking, okay, I need quite a few graphical elements for my kind of my emails, my page, my social media posts. They all need a graphic designer. Now I could add a list here called graphic designer, but actually having website, launch, post-launch are very logical for me for this project. So another way of kind of noting this is to add a color label. So I'm going to call this graphic design. So I'm going to apply this color to any tasks where I'm going to need help from a graphic designer. And this is actually going to be quite a few of my tasks. So this means if I'm talking to a freelancer or an agency, I can come to my board and I'm on the phone and I can say, yes, I need help with a new page, email, competition assets, social media assets, etc., etc. So I'm actually going to clear that filter, um, but you can already see that there are excellent ways to kind of slice and dice your tasks and aggregate the tasks based on attributes such as color. Another really good one to do that with is by members. So I am the creator of this board and naturally a lot of these tasks will be for me. So I can already add myself as a member to these tasks. So what this does is it helps myself and other people see that you know, I'm taking care of this. But I can already see that I can't do this on my own. I'm actually gonna need some help. So I'm thinking it'd be very useful for me to include my colleague Haley. So Haley knows Huddo boards inside and out, especially for Microsoft Office. So I'm adding Haley here to my board, and now you can see her icon appears. Now I can click and drag her on the cards I think that she would be helpful with. 
which for me would be creating a new video and a sales deck. Haley's actually going to get an email now that she's been added to this board. And when she comes here, she can see these tasks and she can quickly go, okay, where has Craig added me? And she can see to a sales deck and a new video. So this is a second good way of kind of segmenting and aggregating your tasks. And I'm going to clear that filter again. So of course, I don't have too many tasks here. So I could think, okay, you know, what order am I going to do this? Obviously, probably website launch and post launch, but what about the tasks within them? So here you could say, well, actually, if I do the new video first, that will go on the web page. Likely, if I run the competition, I can add that competition to the email and social media posts. So you can just change your order by drag and dropping. But I would say a more powerful way of managing kind of dependencies and kind of order of tasks is to use due dates and start dates and end dates. So I would say my next pro tip is to actually do this within timeline. So if you click within the timeline view here, you'll see that I have my lists down the, down the left hand side to do website launch. And then I have this kind of infinite scrolling calendar. And then the orange bar is today's date. Obviously this is blank because we actually haven't set any dates to our cards and tasks. But if you look at the bottom tab, you'll see that I have unscheduled cards. Here you'll see a list of everything that I just created in kind of the column that it sits within. If I take one of these and drag it to my board, you can see that I can add it. It's now added a beginning and end date, and I can click and drag and extend or shorten this date. So I think creating a task is only going to take me a day. But then I can say, well, I want new page, might take me a couple of days. New video is likely to take me longer. You know, I might start the same time, but it might take me almost 10 days. And then email, maybe I'll start that next week. Might only take me a couple of days. Competition, maybe I'll do that on Friday and just take me a day. Social media posts might take me a week. So you can see I'm kind of spacing out my tasks when I think that I'll be able to complete them. Actually, maybe let's say confirm competition winners can happen sooner and only take me a day. So here you see I have this kind of Gantt timeline view of my project. Now if I go back to board view, which personally speaking is my preferred view, uh, if I click on a card and expand the options, you'll see that there is now a start and end date added. So you know this just says you know when I think I should start it, when I think it should end, but it isn't necessarily a due date per se. This is why we actually have three dates within the set dates field. And for most people, perhaps due date is the end date, but I'm going to confirm that by adding a date. So the 19th was my due date here. Send email, say that's confirm that as being the 23rd. And you'll see by adding a due date that now an icon of the clock has appeared. So this basically means that when I look at my board, I can see that these have due dates added. If a due date passes, so let's add a due date for here, if one that's passed and was set yesterday you'll see that the icon is orange. So this, when I come to the board, I can see which tasks are overdue by the color of that icon. Another excellent reason for adding tasks uh, with due dates and start and end dates is the assignments and kind of to-do date views. So if we look at to-do date by views, you'll see that I have one task that's overdue. So I can actually say, okay, that was a bit maybe unrealistic. Let's add a due date of tomorrow. And that has now moved that card to a different date. And you can also see there are some here without dates. So that's quite important if you know for you to quickly see what hasn't been captured as having a due date, and then you can add it. And you can see which ones are due when. The assignment view is more for, you know, who the tasks assigned to so you can see that I have some and so does Haley. but here you see some are unassigned so I can say well let's take care of that I'll make sure that the creating the tasks has happened I've added myself and now that's within my column so this helps me see who has the most tasks so this is an excellent way again of kind of segregating and segmenting your your tasks by brief default views within boards itself so I'm going to go back to boards. I quickly showed this by clicking on a card earlier, but by clicking on a card, you do expand the options that are available. So here you see we'll have the set dates, assigned members, colors, things I've already showed you. 
but there are several other features as well and I think this is perhaps best explained in another video and how these features can help you collaborate and stay organized and stick to deadlines. But for today's video, I'm just going to draw it to a close, but I hope this shows you how to start building a board. And obviously, as your project grows, so will your board. So uh, the flexibility of boards really helps you to maintain your project progress, however big it gets.